So now in this video, we would like to discuss the earthing electrode. So what happens here? As we remember that we have our conductor going like this, then going to one of the electrodes. Okay, the uh, electrode which is immersed inside the soil. So this is our soil. Okay, so this part our soil, this one is our electrode and this one is the conductor coming from the uh, earthing part. Okay, so this one is a single electrode. So what happens in real life? We will have a grid or a grounding grid. Okay, like this one. Okay, like this line, another line. You will find this in E tab when we discuss it in another video. You will find that this uh, grid uh, is designed in E tab. Okay, so what happens? We take the conductor here and uh, to this grid. Okay, so this grid is this one, this part is a conductor. This one is another conductor, earthing conductor. This one is an earthing conductor, another one earthing conductor, and so on. So all of this is a conductor. All of this is immersed inside the soil at a specific depth. Okay, so this one is considered as our grounding grid. Okay, a grid is forming of only conductors. Now, if we would like to decrease the total resistance, we start adding electrodes. For example, we will add electrodes here at the edges. Okay, like this. Like this. Okay, or we can increase number of electrodes at the intersection points like this, like this, and like this, and so on. Continuing all of the grid. And all of this immersed inside the soil. So we have here, all of this is a conductors, and this one is earthing electrode, this one earthing electrode, and this one is earthing electrode. So we'll find that all of this uh, form or all of this components are parallel to each other. Okay, as an example here, the current or the short circuit current is entering like this, then the current will be uh, going through all of this conductor okay then it will be divided inside the electrodes so we'll find that the conductor itself is parallel to the electrodes not series okay the current can go through a conductor then go through the earthing electrode or continue in another conductor to the ground to the electrode okay you will find here a uh, parallel combinations Okay, so you will find that the equivalent resistance is the resistance of the conductor parallel to the equivalent resistance of the electrodes. Okay, so uh, we can form a grounding grid of only conductors or form a ground grid of electrodes and uh, the conductors. Now, in this video, we would like to discuss the earthing electrode. So the material of this electrode can be made of a galvanized iron or copper or any highly conducting material. Okay, because we would like to conduct it, all of this to take the current to the ground. So it must be a conducting material. The material of the earthing electrode should be the same as the earthing conductor. Okay, what does it mean? It means that this conductor and the earthing electrode and the conductors here in the grid are should should have the same earthing conductor because why in order to uh, prevent the uh, corrosion of our electrodes or our uh, conductor due to the uh, connection of a different material produces a, a potential difference between them you will find that the, the voltage normally of the conductor here is different from the voltage uh, normally of this conductor. For example, if we are having a galvanized iron and copper, they are having a different voltage or a different uh, potential difference between them. So this will cause the corrosion of one of these conductors or the earthing electrode or the conducting uh, earthing conductor.
So all of this should have the same material. So the question is how to calculate the resistance of a, an electrical uh, rod or earthing rod. So the earthing rod having this equation. This is the resistance of only one rod. So the resistance will be equal to rho, which is here the soil resistivity. So we'll find here that the resistance of the uh, conductor itself or the earthing electrode is a function in soil resistivity. So as the soil resistivity increases, the resistance of our electrode increases. So that's why you should have a low soil resistivity during grounding over 2 pi L where L is the length of the rod in meter log 8 L which is the length of the rod over D which is the diameter of the rod minus 1 so by substituting in this equation we can get the resistance or the uh, earthing uh, resistance of one electrode now there is a different methods in putting the electrodes okay we would like to produce the uh, minimum value of resistance okay we said that we would like to produce for example a 5 ohm so in order to produce a 5 ohm we have to connect a lot of electrodes in parallel okay so we have a different combination for this electrode this electrode they can be in the form of a whole square or can be in the form of equilateral triangle or can be in the uh, form of L, can be in the form of T, and so on. So there is a different configurations for the uh, earthing grid. So as an example, we are going to discuss the whole square and the equilateral. So for the whole square, we have this one, and it means that hollow because inside it there is nothing. Okay. You will find here we have electrode, 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 which is the red one, and between them are conductors, the black one, connecting between them inside the soil. So, uh, in this one, we will have number of electrodes in one side is equal to 4n minus 1. So, 4n minus 1 representing the total amount of electrodes. Okay, inside a hole. As an example, if I would like here, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I would like six electrodes per side, then I will substitute here by six minus one will give us five. So five multiplied by four give us a uh, twenty uh, electrodes used. So if we one, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so all of this are 20. And the uh, on one side we have 6. So 6 minus 1, 5. 5 multiplied 4 give us a total 20 electrodes. So now let's see the resistance. The resistance here is equal to the resistance of one electrode. Okay, which we uh, obtained the previous uh, formula for it. 1 plus lambda A over N. So we have here N is representing the total number of electrodes. Total number of electrodes. Okay, in the square. And we have here lambda and A. Lambda and A are two factors which we, we did not discuss before. So we we'll see that here lambda is obtained from tables. This table, which is the factor lambda, you will find the number of electrodes along the side of the square. So we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 electrodes on one side. So we'll go here at 6 electrodes. We will have a factor of 6.663. 6.63, okay? So this one, for our example here, will our lambda, okay? Now our factor A is equal to rho, which is the soil resistivity, over 2 pi R. R is the resistance of one electrode multiplied by S. S is the distance between two adjacent electrodes. 
when you are doing this in E tab according to I triple E, you will find that the distance between two electrodes should not exceed 2.5 meter. Okay, this is in E tab, should be uh, not be greater than uh, uh, 2.5 meter or greater than 22.5 meter. You will find this in E tab. So uh, this is the uh, resistance in case of a whole square. Now another one, if we arrange our electrodes in line, okay, like this electrode, 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 and connected between them with the conductors. Now in this case, we have number of electrodes N, one, two, three. So we'll go here, three and 1.66. Then our resistance will be the same as before, R1 plus lambda A, lambda A over N, N is the number of electrodes, lambda from table, A from rho over 2 pi RS as before. So this if our electrodes are arranged in line. Now, if our electrodes are arranged in the form of equilateral triangle, okay? So this is our equilateral triangle where the three sides are equal. Uh, we have here as three electrodes at the vertices of the equilateral triangle. So the earthing resistance will be one over three, two log eight L over D, where L is the length of the rod, the length of the rod. D is the diameter of the rod. Minus one, minus one, plus, 2LS where L is the length of the electrode and S is the length of one side or the distance between two electrodes the length of one side or the length or the distance between two electrodes of course we don't have here any lambda because in the equilateral we have only a three uh, uh, electrodes okay so this is how to calculate the resistance of an electrode okay in a different system such as the whole square or equilateral triangle